Hello, welcome to the next video. What we're looking at now is something that's called precedence tables. So this is basically a way of planning out a task that's got multiple different parts to it. And so coming up with the order the tasks need to be done in, and then that gives you the ability to work out how long the overall process will take. And the way we do that is through this thing called a precedence table. And so what we get then is a table of all the tasks that need to be done, and then we get a little diagram to show which ones can be done at the same time, which ones need to be done first, etc. So for this example here, this is all the tasks that need to be done before you can publish a book. And we've got all these different activities. So we've got to illustrate the cover, write the first draft, research ideas, edit the book, publish it, rework it, proofread it, choose title, copyright, and then come up with the ISBN number. Now, obviously, we can't just illustrate the cover, then write the first draft, then research what it's about, then edit it, then publish it, then rework it. Okay, these need to be done in a special order. And the reason this is called a precedence table is because it tells us which task has to precede each of these. So preceding task, that just means which task comes before it. So this says here, Activity A is illustrate the cover, but before we can do that, we have to have done task H. So if we look at H, that's choose the title. So we can't illustrate the cover until we know what title to put on it, and then choose the title. We can't do that until we've done task B, which is write the first draft. You can't really come up with a title until you've actually written the book and then write the first draft. Well, we can't do that until we've done task C, which is research ideas. And then, does anything come before researching ideas? No, there's no preceding tasks before researching ideas. So, if one of your activities on here has nothing preceding it, that means it goes at the start. That's the first thing to do. So, we can straight away then, in each of these boxes, we write the letter for the activity. So, the only one here with no preceding tasks, the one that goes first, is activity C. So that activity goes first. So then, to see what activity comes next, well, we have to look and we'll say, okay, so which task has C as its preceding one? So we're looking for which task now has C as the thing that comes before it. So C. Activity B has that as coming before it. So that means B comes next. And then you'll see that we've got this little branching thing here. And what this basically means then is that we can do multiple tasks after we've done B. So if we look down this list for which tasks need B to be done. So B, we can do D, we can do H, or we can do I. So that means once we've written the first draft, we can start editing it, we can start choosing the title, and we can start thinking about copywriting it. So that means then I'm gonna write each of these three in these three boxes, because you see how each one of these boxes links back to B. So we need to have done D, so let's write that there. Then we need to have done H, I'm going to do that there, and I. So that means we can get working on these three things at the same time. And then, but each of these has some things that can only be done once the one before it is done. So let's have a look what task can only be done once D is finished. So we're looking for a preceding task of D here, and that is reworking the book, F. So we can't do F until we've done D. So then now let's look, what can't we do until we've done F? So where's F on here? Proofreading it, which is G. So we can't proofread it until we've reworked it. And there we've got this branch finished. So now let's go down to the next branch. So what task can't we do until we've done H? So H here, preceding task. A, illustrate the cover. 
And then what task can't we do until we've done I? Let's look for I in the preceding tasks. And J, we can start to get the ISBN. So now we've got this finished because this last one was done for us. So our whole process now is looking like the very first thing we do is C, research ideas. That leads to B, writing the first draft. Once we've done that, we can do these three things. We can edit it, we can choose the title, and we can get started on copyright. Then, once we've edited it, we can start reworking the book, and then we can proofread it once that's done. Once we've done the title, then we can start to illustrate it. And then, once we've copyrighted it, then we can get the number ready. And then what you see is, once all three of these tasks have been done, we can do task E, which is here, publish the book. And you'll see that E has three preceding tasks. And that means we can't do E until we've done G, A, and J. So that's how one of these precedence tables works. You're looking down this list to see which tasks need to be done before it and building it up from there. So let's have a look at another example. So these are both past paper questions as well, by the way. So this time you'll see a slightly different type of table and we've got an extra column here as well. So a factory produces cans of tinned beans. The table shows the list of tasks and the time taken to complete them. And again, we've got all the tasks, what each one is, and then we've got our column telling us which ones need to go first. And then each of them also has a time for it. So it's telling you each stage of this, how long it takes. And then if we look down here, you'll see that this time we've got a letter and we've also got a number. So this means, well, first off in this branch, we have to start with task C. Blanche for dried beans in water. And then about 300 that is written there. That's how long it takes. So what it wants us to do is complete the diagram below to show the tasks and the times in the boxes. So we can see here that the reason C has been put right at the start is because C has no preceding tasks. There's no lines coming out of this side of it, so there's nothing needs to be done first. And you see here, this other branch, this has also got no lines coming out of it here. So there's no preceding task needs to be done. So let's look what other one has no preceding task. Well, that is F, to make the source. You don't need to have done anything else before you can do that. And that takes 900 seconds. So then let's follow each of these branches. Let's start with this top one. So what task needs you to have done C before it? So here's the list of the tasks that need to be done first. So C, that is task A. We can't boil the beans until we've done C. So that means after C we have A. And that takes 500 seconds. So then what task needs A done before we can do it. So we look down here for A, and that is putting the beans in the tin. So that is H, and that only takes two seconds. So we finish that branch. Let's look at this one now. What task needs F to have been done before you can do it? Let's have a look down. F, well, the task that needs that done is E, put the sauce in the tin. Makes sense. We can't put the sauce in the tin until we've made it. And that takes two seconds. So now you see these branches combine. So both of these tasks need to be done before you can do this task. So what we're looking for now is what task needs H and E to be done before you can do it. So we go down to preceding tasks. Well, B, that needs H and E to be done. So that's putting on the lid. That takes three seconds. So we're basically saying for task B, putting on the lid, we can't do that until we've put the beans in the tin. Makes sense. And put the sauce in the tin. So makes sense. Now, what task needs us to have done B? So let's go down for B under proceeding. Cook the beans in sauce in the tin. 
So that's I, and that takes 300 seconds. Then, what task needs you to have done I first? Let's look for I in our preceding tasks column. And that is D, attach a label. And that takes five seconds. And then for this final box, what task needs you to have done D first? Well, let's look down. And that is G, put them in a box. And that takes five seconds as well. So now we've completed that. We've done part A. And part B is the factory manager thinks that this whole process can be completed in less than 25 minutes. Based on the times given, is the factory manager correct? Use your working to justify your answer. So we need to work out how long this whole process is going to take, and that's why we've written the times down. But one thing we'll look out for is in minutes, and these are in seconds. So once we've worked out how long it takes in seconds, we'll have to divide that by 60 to turn it into minutes so we can properly compare it. So, the next leads to the potential bit where people trip up is the time scale. Okay, you don't just add all these times together because these bits that are in branches like this, these can be done at the same time as each other. We can be working on blanching the beans and then boiling them and then putting them in the tin at the same time as we're cooking the sauce and putting that in the tin. So, to work out the time the whole thing's going to take, we want to work out the time that this branch, set of branches takes. And so we could do tasks C, A and H in 300 plus 500 is 800 plus 2 in 802 seconds. We could do this whole branch here. We could do that in 802 seconds. But... We can't move on to this until this branch is done. So how long does this branch take? Well, this branch takes 900 plus 2, 902 seconds. So we can't move on to this bit until the 902 seconds have passed. So when you've got branches like this that split up and you're trying to work out how long it takes, you take the longest time. Because even though this one is finished first, we can't move on until this one is finished as well. So, so far we've got 902 seconds for this. I'm just going to do this working on the side here. And then we've got plus 3, plus 300, plus 5, plus 5. Because these tasks now all happen in a row from each other. So our total time there is 902 plus 3 is 905, um, 1,205, 1,210, 1,215 seconds. But we want to divide that by 60 to turn that into minutes. So 1,215 divided by 60 is giving us 20... 0.25 minutes. So 20 and a quarter minutes, or if we wanted, that's 20 minutes and 15 seconds. <coughs> but this is a bit where the SQA is fussy. We can't just work out the time. We have to explicitly answer the question. So it's based on the times given. Is he correct? Can this be done in less than 25 minutes? So we have to write down, yes, he is correct because 20 minutes and 15 seconds is less than 25 minutes. And we have to be explicit with that bit at the end. So this was a little bit of a longer video than normal, but I've gone through two past paper examples of this. So hopefully it was all understandable. If not, you know how to get in touch with me. So thanks for watching.